guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how to do a poppy face cake. So we're going to start with two six inch round chocolate cakes and I'm just going to fill them with chocolate buttercream. Just smooshing it on. Not too thickly because I don't want to just squish out when I start pressing the cake later to mold it and shape it. Now I'm just using a template to cut around the edges and cut out the rough shape of her face. Now I'm just cutting off flat edges on both sides where I'm going to attach her ears a little bit later and her ears will also be made out of cake. Now come her ears and I've just layered them the same way with buttercream in between and at this stage I've just, uh, just done the rough shape, the same thing here with the ponytail as well, just the rough shape um, and then I'm going to refine that more later on. Unfortunately I turned the camera off, Dope. but I did and um, novice but anyway and um, so I am going to do my best to run you through what I did in between this step and the next step as we go through the next step. So here I'm um, just putting a coat of buttercream over the whole cake. You can use ganache, sometimes I do use ganache but on this one I decided just to use buttercream. Um, with the sculpting getting the 3D aspect of the face it's just important to remember things like look at the photo for reference and look at things like her ears are lower than her face um, her forehead's a bit higher, her cheeks are higher, that where you're going to put her nose needs to be recessed and where you're going to put her mouth needs to be recessed as well and then just um, curve her chin. And now I'm just smoothing down the buttercream, just giving it a nice as smooth finish as possible before I chuck it in the fridge to harden before I cover it. Now I'm just rolling out the fondant, um, not too thin, I want it quite thick because I want to be able to manipulate it to create a nice 3D effect when I put it over here. As you can see here, I'm just putting it over and I'm just smoothing it in, all the creases and crevices, just slowly working out that 3D effect. Making the cheek stand out, smoothing down over the mouth and around, making sure there's no air bubbles. And it's up to you how much time you spend here perfecting this, but I can go a little bit over the top sometimes and I like it to be really smoothed down, but it's up to you. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to trim off all the excess around and I just, I've sped up the video for you so you're not sitting here for hours, but it, I'm not actually doing it that fast. Now just trimming off the part at the top of the ponytail. Right now I'm just taking my Dresden tool and it's the fatter end of my Dresden tool and I'm just using that combined with my finger to start making the shape of her ear indentation. Now I'm just using my ball tool, um, the larger one of the lot, and that's just helping to widen that area and create that 3D effect. I'm going to repeat that on the other side, and I'm following my template this whole time to give me an idea of how the ears are actually shaped, where the indents start, where they finish, where the shading is, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. 
Right now I'm just using the template to mark where her eyes are going to go. And with my ball tool, I'm just going to gently, and a lot slower than it looks on here, just make some indents where I'm going to put her eyes later. And I'm making them a little bit bigger than her actual eyes going to be, because if you look at the picture, you can see um, her eye sockets are actually shaded, and she's got some pink around there. I'm just covering her ponytail. Looks a bit funny at this stage. Um, lots of things spring to mind, but it looks strange at this stage. But as we move through the tutorial and we start to cover it, I promise it won't look as strange. I'm just smoothing it over, making sure there's no air bubbles. Now I'm just smoothing down where I'm putting her mouth and unfortunately I turned the camera off here but as you can see I just used my tools the Dresden tool first just to make that indent that I traced around with the shape of the mouth from the template now I'm just using the ball tool and the Dresden tool to smooth that area in not too deep but deep enough that it looks like her mouth's open when we shade it in later again you can be as fussy as you like or as not fussy as you like Now I'm shaping her nose, so I've just rolled a slug, I guess you could say, and I'm just going to measure it against the template and sort of get the right size. Once I'm happy with the size, I'm rolling it, my two fingers over it to give it that funny shape. And I'm just going to slightly manipulate it over the template till I'm happy, and then put it on her face and continue to manipulate it until I'm happy, using my ball tool to give her a couple of nostrils. Making them relatively big, again just referring to your template. Right, as you can see I turned the camera off again um, and I forgot to show you how I did her mouth but basically the same way I'm shading her ears here is what I did with her mouth. I used petal dust and I'll put the links in below um, for all the materials and tools etc that I use that I have links for. But with the mouth, I just used a cherry red um, edible petal dust um, or luster dust um, for her tongue. And then I used a black dust over the top of that to shade it in and create sort of a tongue shape. Now I'm using a violet mixed with a little bit of pink and a tiny bit of black, but mostly violet, to shade in her ears. Um, and I'm using a fuchsia to shade in her cheeks. And then I'm going to use the same fuchsia to shade in her nose and her eyes and the areas of her that are darker, um, a little bit around the edges and stuff. Again, refer to your template and it'll help you to figure out where to shade to give that 3D effect. I'm just shading around her mouth, leaving a thin line, um, which will help create that 3D definition again. Under the nose, make it slightly darker. For her nose, her ponytail and the hair, I did actually use a darker pink, um, but pink can tend to fade sometimes, so that's where the dust come in really handy because you can just use those to go over the top and darken when you need to. I'm just shading in her nostrils with the violet and a little bit of black. Right now I'm shading in her eye sockets, like I mentioned before, um, her eyeballs are going to be slightly smaller than the socket and that shading that we're doing now is going to stand out about, uh, stand out a bit sorry, and help give that definition um, and that 3D effect. All 
right, now I've just rolled two small balls. Again, I've used my template to measure the size of the balls that I need. And I've just used a little bit of water to stick them in. Um, you can buy edible glue that you can buy in a puddle and you can just use that, to the, which I do have and do sometimes use. But water works just as well. So I'm just gently pushing those in, smoothing them down until I get the shape that I'm happy with. Now I've moved on to the teeth. And I've just used the template and I've just traced around them. I've cut out circles, cut off the tips of the circles, manipulated them and then stuck them in to match that template. Now I'm just using the sharper end of my Dresden tool and I'm just getting the shape that I want, smoothing, smoothing them up. And then I just carry on doing this until I've got all the teeth in. Now for the bottom row, I'm doing a similar sort of thing, but as they're just really tiny, I'm rolling very small cylinders, and I'm just sticking them in, again using water, and then pressing them down with my Dresden tool. Now onto the eyes, I've just cut out two small circles of pink, and just placing them on, again referring to the template for the correct placement. Now using a very fine paintbrush and a gel colour, um, I'm using a combination of the fuchsia pink and the um, violet purple here. I'm just painting an a edge around, a line around the edge of her eye, sorry, apologies, um, around the edge of her eye. And this just helps give definition and then I just slowly pull it in a little bit. But I don't want to paint the whole iris in this colour as the, having the two different colours helps it give it that 3D effect. Oh yeah, and be careful not to press on your cake too hard like I did and leave a beautiful little dimple on her cheek. Which luckily I cover up later with hair so it's not so much of a stress. Desperately trying to rub it out there. It's not going anywhere. Right, so now I'm just going to put a little sparkle in their eyes and I've rolled a really, really tiny small dot of white. And I'm just going to place those, again referring to the template can help you, just place those in her eyes and it helps give her that sparkle. Now I'm on to the eyebrows and I'm rolling like little slugs. Definitely fatter at one end but thinner at the other. I'm just measuring it against her eye to see how long it is and if I need to chop some off. Right, now using my craft knife blade, I'm just going to cut little triangles out, two triangles which will give me three lashes, and then I just gently manipulate them with my tools and my fingers. And then I'm going to glue that on around her eye. Right, making sure the placement is right before I glue it down. Yep, happy with that, off it comes. On the other side. Now moving on to the hair. And I've just rolled out sort of a slug, squished it down a bit, and then with my tool made, in some, made some hairlines. And then I'm just going to place them around the head, again referring to my template, using bigger pieces where I need to. You should just figure it out as you go. Always referring to the template definitely helps.
Right, now just moving on to her ponytail. Same technique as with the hair on her head, just but this time I was using fatter slugs. Right now I've moved on to putting on her band and I've just used my hand, my thumb actually, to press down a line where I want her band to be to help give that 3D effect again that her band's actually in her hair rather than protruding off it. And I've just rolled a thin green strip that I'm going to place over. Just chopping it neatly at either side. Now I've just used one of my flower cutters. It has quite sharp petals. I think it's a daisy cutter. And I'm just using that, I'm going to use each of those individual petals for the little green leaves, I take it, off her headband. And I'm just going to go along and place those all along her headband. Now I'm just cutting out the petals that go on her headband. Now I didn't have um, a teardrop shape for the smaller ones, so I've just cut circles and then I'm going to use that bigger teardrop just to cut the lines, just cut, trim it a bit smaller. I'm just placing on the first big one and now moving on to the smaller ones. And I'm just using my Dresden tool to push them in and make two lines. Unfortunately it's not very clear. I did get a budget camera and I was quite proud of myself until I saw the quality. Um, but, anyway, just making lines with the Dresden tool, two lines, just to give it that crease pebble effect. And if you don't have a Dresden tool, you can use a toothpick or you can get creative and find things around the house that you can use instead. Um, again, I turned off the camera, but for her band around her ponytail, I just rolled a long tube of blue. And then I just placed that over and trimmed it on either side and then just pressed it into shape. Now I'm just shading her hair with the um, fuchsia pink. And this time I haven't mixed it with any other pink, it's just a straight fuchsia to try and get that hair darker. Now I'm just moving on to covering the board. I've put water down and now I'm just using a thin piece of yellow that I rolled out. And I'm just going to gently push it in to a right, right the way around Poppy's head and hair. I'm just going to keep doing this until I'm happy, trimming where I need to. And in some places you might need to stretch it a little bit, play with it, manipulate it, and that's fine. Just do what you need to do. Just do it gently so you don't tear your fondant. Do it, you should be fine. <laughs> got the fuchsia, the fuchsia dust, and I'm just dusting around the edges of the board, just the edges, with a big blush brush, um, well, that's not used for makeup, but it does the trick for this, um, and just right around the edges, and this will just give that sort of sun effect. I and, and hope you enjoyed hanging out with me doing this awesome cake, and thank you so much for watching, you'll find all the links below.